My name is Lois Capps, and I'm a member of Congress, and I represent the 23rd District, which is on the central coast of California. And you are a chairwoman of the Congressional Women's Caucus. It's the Congressional Caucus for Women's Issues. All right. And it is a caucus for all the women of the House. And is it bipartisan or just oh, Democrats? Oh, totally bipartisan. Okay, and why From is there? From its very beginning, it's been bipartisan. Okay. And how long has the caucus been in existence? This is a timely uh, time to be having this conversation. The Women's Caucus has, will celebrate its 31st birthday next week. And our counterpart in the nonprofit sector, Women's Policy Inc., is having a gala this week to celebrate its 31st year, too, as our, as our support and our uh, group that, that interfaces with, with the world that we all represent, parts of which we all represent. All right, and what are the issues that y'all are focusing on this year? We have a number of issues that we have narrowed down because women are interested in a lot of things. As our, our male colleagues, we all have a wide range of interests, but we have a few that we've selected uh, that we call the must pass, and, and we've built on that. This is our second year of this Congress, the 110th, and um, we have uh, focused on areas of health and women, one area in particular, women's uh, heart issues, uh, um, women and heart, uh, celebrating the Heart Month for women and wear red and passing legislation having to do with women and heart disease. So um, this will be hopefully passed during the session of Congress, that's our goal. And we also are focusing on an issue that has to do with women's childbirth experiences, maternal mortality. And we are united with other women's caucuses around the world and, and groups of women because this is an international challenge. Uh, we have our own challenges in this country because we have um, an abysmal record. And really, when you think of it, we're 40th uh, in, the, in the world of countries in uh, the number of women who die in childbirth. We, we, are the, we have the lowest, worst record of any industrialized country. Wow. And will it make a difference having a woman as Speaker of the House, do you it think? It has made a tremendous difference already. Um, I'm, I'm mindful of her support for these issues that I've just mentioned. And also, another area of big interest to us is women as they have experienced through their education an emphasis or lack of emphasis on math and science. And we know that that is an area that young girls have often been um, fallen behind uh, with a certain uh, stereotypes and assumptions about what they're capable of doing. And so it's our intention, and we've begun to focus on this as a caucus, to really look at the way girls receive education in these areas that are so important, both for our national economy and for their own development. Okay. And that's an area that we focus on. And then finally, I'll mention another area. I focused on the first two that are health interest and a particular interest of mine as well. But we have great concerns about the experience that women are having in the military based on what they've been telling us, based on their active duty uh, in Iraq for, for more, in more ways than they ever have in any other situation in battle. And so their stories that are coming back are troubling and of concern to the branches of the military, to the Army. The Secretary of the Army called and asked us to follow up and have a second hearing on the experiences that women are bringing home of harassment, of uh, sexual uh, uh, treatment that has been very, very um, difficult for them and something we, ne we need to really deal with. Right. And my last question, you are an uncommitted superdelegate in the Democratic uh, primary. What is going through your mind or what is going through the, the minds of superdelegates do you think right now? It's an interesting a title because I was not really aware until this election that I had that category attached to my name. So it's something we are kind of uh, looking around thinking what role will we play. It's not completely defined yet because we don't know the outcome of this primary season. I just have to tell you I think it's the most exciting election season I've ever witnessed and taken part in. Uh, from every state and in every one of the uh, caucuses and primaries so far. We've seen record turnouts. And I, I particularly uh, enjoy working with young people. I was a school nurse for my career before I came to Congress, and it's the thing I miss the most, being around young people. And I've watched uh, first-time voters, uh, college students or people newly out in the workplace, get engaged in this campaign like I've never seen before. And I salute them 
whatever candidate they're going for. And, and that, I believe and, and want very much to happen, will translate into a, a reawakening of our dem democracy and a very good thing for those of us who serve in the House of Representatives and in other positions of leadership. So this is a new day and who knows the outcome and I, uh, I, I want very much for this to be an open and transparent election process and for the Democratic Party for which the superdelegate is going to be perhaps called into, into play, I would hope that we wouldn't have to use it because I want people to feel that their vote uh, in the voting booth in the primary did count. And so that's, in my dreams, we will come to a, a coalition around a one candidate uh, and have a really bang up uh, the election in the fall as well.